hi friends and friendly subscribers welcome back to my channel this is inner hill tarot and today we're going to do unboxing silent flip through and hot takes of this witch oracle decks woman in total control of herself by us games i believe yes before i i started to do the unboxing well i already unboxed it i want to do a little bit of rant of like i think the uh, us games is really playing games with uh, european people uh, of how i feel a little bit neglected by us games really um by how they're prolonging the arrival of their decks in europe it feels like they want to make sure everyone in the u.s have their decks and they got reviewed first before they started to sell in europe or somewhere else i don't know i can i cannot uh, talk about the other places in the world but um i noticed that's what's happening in Europe if I can only open this deck <laughs> so I don't know in in the games of like reviewing US games decks I feel that um, European point of view is not highly regarded by them and so they want to see also if a deck doing well in America and then they will promote it in um, Europe, I feel. Uh, but it, if it's not, then the chances that we can get the particular deck from them in Europe um, is very slim. So it's like you kind of have to buy it from the US um, marketplace or something like that. So it kind of doesn't stick with me well. And I actually follow them in their social media, uh, Instagram. And they always say, oh, this is also not come out in the US yet. But a lot of time I found <laughs> they already came out, for example, like Olivia Rose tar Minds Eye Tarot. It's very annoying because the people in the US already start gotten it. And they just like keep holding off in Europe. And I think some of the bookseller in europe just getting it anyway and already um selling it without any launching date so i don't know i feel a little bit apprehensive with us game stuff um but anyway let's talk about this deck in itself it's already three minutes so the deck in itself the box is okay it's i think it's made in china um it doesn't say here the box is beautiful because it said um, become a disciple of inner devotion, resurrect the silver salvation of self-respect. So basically what make um, a witch should be. And to be quite honest as well, I feel a little bit annoyed by the image that they choose for this deck to um, be launched in uh, Europe because in US they have a different image because it's really the same <laughs> image from Tara of Delphi that's actually worldwide um, famous this deck and it's uh, out of print for a while now so and of course it's way um, earlier <laughs> than this deck so it's quite annoying why they don't just use the same um, image like the us um, version you know we we don't need to see this um, image again and again we already know that this is belong to tara of delphi you know <laughs> so that's also another things that i'm annoyed by but anyway it is what it is let's go to the uh yeah made in china of course let's t see t the guidebook it's 2023 but in the u.s it came out like early 2023 and we're already in the second half of august now so we're like eight months late or something like this six to eight months late um but the guidebook itself it's really beautiful i feel um 
it's full colored and it has so many pages in it 200 something 215 pages by angie selin's this deck so i really like angie selin's uh, creations actually i'm going to do a video just angie angie selin's deck because i feel her oracle um the way she make the oracle and work with the illustrator it's it's a new point of view that's um subtle evocative um for me because uh there's a lot of like oracle decks out there is either too subtle or too loud as well or it's just like lost in the sauce or either that or it's too simple <laughs> to the point that yeah i cannot really use you because sometimes it's just too simple or it's just too confusing but i think angie Solin's, uh decks are like something there's something beautiful about it and with the color palette that she chose with her decks they're just beautiful and the guidebook it's kind of breathtaking actually it's beautiful okay so let's start the silent flip through first and then um i will give a i will do a personal take not a hot take anymore because i believe a lot of uh, the american um youtube channel already do a lot of uh, hot takes of it okay so enjoy
Okay, guys, we just finished doing a very fast silent flip through of this witch oracle deck by Angie Salins and art by Silas Tobo. And what can I say about the artwork? It's beautiful. It's kind of like I said again, all Angie Salins work. Um, she worked well with her, the, her illustrator um so they kind of like giving the evocative feeling of um in her in each of her deck i feel like a different feeling altogether and it's i think it's not very easy to do especially in a uh, mass market level the only thing that i don't like about this deck is the quality of uh, the glossiness of the cardstock is really insane to me <laughs> I cannot, uh, when I do in video like this, I can only see the reflection of myself in their, in their cards. So um, it's quite annoying, especially when it's, um, the images in itself is very beautiful. Um, Victoriana um, era, you know, that it's supposed to be treated with like a, the thickest cardstock possible um, with the rose petal finish. <laughs> you know like um n not glossy at all and pff, it's kind of hard to see this in a glossy cardstock to be quite honest i mean i get it because a lot of a lot of um the images are quite muted colors so it needs the punchiness of the glossy paper but at the same time i mean really you can just like bump up a little bit of the contrast like five to ten percent then you can have uh, the same vibrancy without being too garish for um, this type of images you know because i'm used to be a photographer and i shoot this kind of colors for food so i know what i'm talking about Anyway, come back to the deck. Um, so she of the Invisible Alley. It's kind of remind me of this episode in um, in the Mandalorian when the baby Yoda, uh, Grogu, is kind of like he wasn't sleeping, and the Mandalorian was sleeping when they were in the in 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 that uh, line you know when they're doing the fast uh, fast track i forgot all of a sudden what is it called and grogu was actually seeing the whale in in uh, as um as a shadow and he felt a little bit scared but um actually i think this whale is also mintaka uh, an orion uh, star galaxy system animal or energy or something like this so to have this in this deck is really nice because it has this feeling of a star seed as well and it's quite subtle because it's not saying like in rebecca campbell decks was like mintaka something like this it's kind of like out there um so it's quite subtle and i like uh you know the feeling it's quite um it's quite go together with this one for example it looks very natural both of them to be in the same deck that's how i feel about it and also with a lot of mythical uh, creatures here um i mean to be quite honest in the first glance it looks really nice but then i'm seeing again it's a bit a bit a tiny tad bit all over the place as well because it wants to incorporate the star seed feeling it wants to incorporate the um the feeling of um greek uh, pantheon goddesses and this is more like astrological it can be selene the moon goddess and this is more like a warrior kind of feeling and this is circus so it is a little bit all over the place but i think the saving grace of this deck is because the color palette is looks so similarly beautiful and it has this um greek hellenistic feeling for like pre-raphaelite and Raphael um and victorian uh 
drawings into it and in some cases this is like a real drawing and they just took out the figure and put different backgrounds so it's kind of work and this one as well i feel so um i have to see this deck working with my other ones like tarot of um, delphi like i already said and also with a uh, tarot of Aphrodite. I really would like to see how they pan out working out together and um, yeah because they have both similar feeling and yeah I think I will have a review of this deck um, yeah by the end of the month so also the Medusa as the devouring mother is very interesting feeling because Medusa actually uh, are she was raped right so she's a rape victim and to have her depicted as something else something other uh other archetype is kind of like a bit hurtful for me because it feels i mean i don't know <laughs> but i guess it's also at the same time if you don't if you if you don't work with your trauma as a you know you can turn into something else i guess it can go that way i haven't read the guidebook so that is my interpretation at the get-go so yeah i love this deck um but at the same time i have to see how it's pan out um with the other uh deck that i have with this kind of similar vibe um i feel like i like the dragon uh companion deck from Angie Solins more than this one actually but yeah I think I will do a review only of her deck after I'm working with them quite a bit okay so that's it guys for today um my uh personal take of this witch oracle deck um yeah i like it i'm going to try how does it pan out and let me know if you already work with this deck how does it work for you do you feel connected instantly are you still working with it you don't like it and yeah please let me know in the comments because that is the best way um for me to learn from you as well and don't forget to subscribe and share as well this video if you find it useful um, because that's also the way you can support me to keep growing this channel and um, yeah so that i can keep making this kind of content if you like as well <laughs> okay so thank you so much guys for your time i hope you have a great day and night anytime you watch this video um see you in the next one Bye bye